All right, folks, so in today's video, we're going to take a look at this battery. It's from Power Queen. It's a lithium iron phosphate 4 battery, 12.8 volts, 50 amp hours. And there's really not much else on this battery to take a look at. It has the typical ABS plastic case, and this thing's pretty small and lightweight. I think it weighs around 14 pounds, give or take. You have two terminals here. It comes with terminal protectors, and it has this handle or this strap for carrying. And uh, that's really it. Before we get started, I did want to say that I was contacted by Power Queen. They asked if I would do a review of this particular battery, and of course I said yes. So they sent this to me free of charge in exchange for this video review. If you're the type of person who is triggered by sponsored content on YouTube, I suggest you go watch some cat videos. So here are the plastic, maybe they're Teflon inserts that you get on the battery that come in here. Try to keep these if you buy one of these because these are really handy for if you were going to transport the battery or put it in storage and you don't want anything going across the terminals. They also came with these two M8 uh, bolts and each one of these has a washer and a lock washer and they also came with extra washers. And then they also came with these bolt covers. Uh, these are M8 bolts and you would use these bolt cutters to protect these and they just screw right into the battery here. And when I screw these in, there is a little bit of a gap there. I don't know how well you can see that, but um, that gap is for the terminal connector that you have connecting this battery to your inverter, for example. And then you can also make that a little bit smaller with the use of that washer. So the battery comes with a couple of different things. The first is a sticker sheet. And who doesn't like stickers? Makes it all worthwhile. And then it comes with this cheat sheet that tells you some very basic safety handling uh, information and some things you need to do before you use your battery. We're not going to look at that. It's pretty much common knowledge. Uh, if you haven't had any experience with batteries like this, then maybe you want to take a look at that. But more importantly, you probably want to read this manual. And like all Power Queen products, it comes with a pretty nice, well-written manual. Let's take a quick look. Uh, here we just have a quick product overview. You can see your max continuous output power, 640 watts. We'll test that with an inverter. Uh, max discharge current is 50 amps. Recommended charge current is 10 amps. They'll refer to this as 0.2C, which means 20% of capacity. So if it was a 100 amp hour, it would be 20 amps because that would be 20% of capacity. The charging voltage that you want to use is 14.4 plus or minus 0.2 volts. Operating voltage is 12.8. Now it's going to be higher than that when the battery is fully charged and it is going to drop down below that as we discharge the battery. Then here's some information about the size of this battery. It's about 6.69 inches tall, 7.79 uh, inches across, and then 6.53 inches deep. It's pretty small. And then here's some information about the bolts. We already talked about these M8 bolts. There's some safety information and some warnings. We're not going to read through that, but I encourage you to do that. The big thing that I want to take a look at here is the battery parameters. And here we go. So it tells you your cell type is lithium iron phosphate 4, and then you have your uh, nominal voltage, your rated capacity, your energy, and we just covered all that. Talks a little bit about internal resistance and cycle time or cycle life, 4,000 charge and discharge. Now that's full discharge and recharge. So if you use it at like 20% capacity and recharge, this is probably going to be extended a little bit. And here's what I wanted to focus in on. There is a surge discharge current up to 150 amps for one second. If you look over here, some more dimensions and some protection classes, IP65. And then there's some other stuff around operating temperature range. And so it says charge from zero degrees Celsius to 50 which is 32 to 113 in American. Discharge would be negative four degrees Fahrenheit to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And then for storage, you wanna go from around 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 113. When we take a look at here, it tells you a couple of different things, how to connect it to your generator or your solar controller, for example. And it also talks about estimating battery capacity. One of the things I wanted to show was how to connect the batteries. And they do have some good information here around connecting in parallel and then connecting your batteries in series. Now, it's my understanding that you can connect four of these either direction for a total of 16 batteries. Here's a diagram of eight. Now, what I would recommend is, is that if you're going to build a large battery bank like this, maybe you should just look at the 100 amp hour or the 200 amp hour versions of this battery. And then just a little bit more information around general steps and things that you can do if your battery stops working. I'll include a link to this website below where you can check it out. 
but you can see the battery is normally $199.99 and right now it is $136.48. I'll have a link below that gets you a 5% off uh, discount and that would put the price right now at $129.65. There's also other information here that you might want to check out, so check it out. Okay, and we're going to use this device. It's from West Mountain Radio, and it is a CBA4, Computerized Battery Analyzer, and it gets hot. Anyhow, you just connect this USB port up to your computer, and there's some software we'll take a look at, and then you connect these Anderson power poles to your battery, and we're going to drain about 10 amps an hour, so we should have about a five-hour test. Okay, so we have this 10 gauge wire going from our positive and negative terminals into the power pole connectors on the computer battery analyzer. And then we have the USB cable going from here into the computer. Let's switch over to the software. Okay, so here's our computer control software. And if you look over here for battery, we have hit the detect button. And we have a lithium iron phosphate battery selected. It detected the voltage at 13.6. The capacity right now says 100 uh, amp hours, and that's not true. So we're going to change that to 50. Uh, I believe it has four cells in there, but I'm not 100% sure. We're going to leave it as is. And over here for our discharge, we have a cutoff voltage set for 10 volts. I'm not sure what the internal BMS cutoff is on this battery, but I typically cut off at 10 for all these tests. If the BMS is higher than that, like 10.5, for example, then the test will stop because of the BMS. Test amps are going to be 10 amps per hour. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit start. And then our test is beginning. Now we see a little bit of sag right out of the gate. And you always see that when you initially put a load on a battery. Now this should run for about five hours and we're going to come back when it's done. Okay, the test is done. And let's take a look over here and we can see the results. So the test is complete. We got 51.070 amps out of the battery, and that is above the specified rating, so that's awesome. And we got 645.834 uh, watts out of the battery, and I believe it was rated for 640. So again, we were over uh, a little bit there as well, and the test ran for 306 minutes, which was just over five hours. If we take a look at the curve here, we can see that it held pretty good up to about 20 amps out. Then it dropped down, but this is only 12.7 uh, voltage, which is still really good, uh, not really a problem. And then the test subsided or stopped at uh, 10 volts, which is what we had the cutoff set for. So overall, we're going to give it a pass and uh, pretty happy with the performance so far. Okay, so we have the battery connected to our inverter, and we have a clamp on amp meter to read the amperage out of the battery, and then we have a meter connected to the battery terminal so we can see the voltage. Right now we're just over 13.7 volts, and I'm going to go ahead and kick on the heat gun. Right now the heat gun's on high, and you can see we're pulling over 1,000 watts out of the inverter. And that's about 118 amps out of the battery, which is way over the specified rating. I wouldn't recommend you do that. All right, now we have the heat gun on low, and the inverter says it's putting at about 600 watts. The Kumin watt meters agreeing with that at around 605, 606. You can see the battery is dropping down to about 12.44, and we're getting 57 amps out of the battery. I just kicked it on high. I'm not going to leave it here for long, but I just wanted to get uh, all the specs for that as well. And then here we go back on low. Remember, if people are testing batteries and they're not showing data like this, it's a show and tell and not a test. Anyhow, I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I'd like to thank Power Queen for sending this battery to me for my review. Post any questions below and I'll do my best to respond. Thanks for watching, folks.